Today I'm going to show you how to cook a tri-tip roast in an instant pot. Hi, I'm Aliyah Millam. I am the founder of the food blog Premeditated Leftovers and the author of the cookbook Prep Ahead Meals from Scratch. Now, tri-tip is wonderful on the grill and we're used to it on the grill, but sometimes the weather is just too cold or too windy outside for us to grill and that is when it's a great time to go ahead and cook it in the instant pot. So what we're going to do, what we're going to start doing um, is we're going to heat this to saute first. So we're going to pull the rack out and then we're going to hit the saute button right here. And then we're going to add some olive oil in just a minute. We're going to let it heat for just a little bit while I show you what I do with the roast. Now, this is supposedly a trimmed cut of tri-tip and they always say trimmed and then when you flip them over they always have this thick thing of fat. When you cook tri-tip on the grill or in the Instant Pot, you're going to want to remove this fat. Now I've started removing most of it and I'm just going to show you how I do it. What I do is I roll back the fat and I use the knife just to remove the fat without removing the meat. And I, you can use whatever knife you're the most comfortable with. I have this really little paring knife and it might not be the knife that most people recommend, but it's one that I feel really comfortable using um, and, it's, and I can work fairly quickly with it. So if you just pull this back and I wanna pull off the fat without pull, cutting off too much of the meat. And what I found with some of my larger knives is that um, they're a little bit more aggressive and they take off more of the meat when I'm pulling off the fat. Okay, so here's that last piece. Now I don't worry about getting every single little piece of fat. And I will tell you when I cook the tri-tip in the oven, I leave the fat on and I cook it with the fat side up. So um, I, I do different things with it depending on how I'm going to cook it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my hands real quick and throw away the fat and then I'm going to show you the rub that I put on it. So now what I do is I put on my Santa Maria dry rub and if you click the link below it'll take you not only to directions for how to cook your tri-tip in an instant pot or an electric pressure cooker but it will also take you to the recipe for the dry rub mix. So I'm going to use one tablespoon to start. I'm going to sprinkle it over the top of this tri-tip and we're going to rub it in to, and I'm going to be careful that it doesn't, the measuring spoon doesn't touch the meat. Um, that way I can continue to reuse it. Okay, so then we're just going to rub it in. That's what we do with a dry rub. I like to apply a little bit of pressure and um, you'll know when it starts to change color, when it gets, takes on the redder color of the meat, that you're getting it deep in there. And we're not only gonna wanna get it on the top, but I start pulling that over to the sides because we want it to get on all, every piece of the meat. Top, bottom, and sides. I'm gonna flip this over in just a minute. And it's kind of gross to do it with your fingers, and I know not everybody wants to touch meat with their hands. So if you don't like to, you can get go ahead and get those lunch lady gloves whenever you're working with meat. I have um, one friend who refuses to touch meat or cook meat, um, but she'll eat it. She just does not want to touch it in any way, shape, or form. And I understand that. I respect that. But if you put on gloves, then you can do it without having to actually get it on your fingers, right? Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over in just a second. I'm just gonna work this in a little bit more. Now, if I know in advance that I'm going to be doing this, I can, after I've worked the dry rub in completely, then what I could do is put this in the refrigerator and just let it sit. I still have some on my fingers. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the end, gonna be careful not to touch, and um, with any part that's touched the meat, that jar. And I'm going to um, work this in and I'm not going to put this back in the jar now that my hands are dirty. Okay, now the Santa Maria dry rub, it's the traditional dry rub that's used on tri-tip. And if you've never heard of tri-tip before, or if you've just learned of it, because you probably have heard of it if you've shown up here to watch this video. Um, it is um, from the bottom a sirloin cut. I think it's a subprimal cut. I took bovine management in high school, 
So I, but I, that was a long time ago. So I don't remember all of my cuts perfectly, but it is a sirloin cut. And so if you're not in the Southwest um, United States, you might have a hard time finding it, but you can go if you want to go to a butcher shop. I moved to Virginia. Um, oops, I just spilled that. I'm going to work this in here on this side. You can see from above what I'm doing. Um, when I moved to Virginia, I went to the, just the grocery store looking for tri-tip and I was not able to find it. I had to go to a, a butcher shop and ask them specifically to cut it for me. Um, it is a, So the Santa Maria um, dry rub mix is a traditional dry rub that is used on this in California, but you can use whatever spice mix you want. Um, you can just use garlic and onion and pepper and salt. That's perfectly fine, totally legit. Um, you can use a Cajun spice mix or a fajita spice mix, taco seasoning, whatever spice mix you have and that your family likes, you are welcome to use it as a dry rub. Just rub it into the meat and um, then it'll be ready. You can, if you have time, you can put it in the refrigerator for an hour or two for the uh, meat to take on more of the flavor of the dry rub. If you don't have time, that's cool. You can go ahead and cook it, which is what we're gonna do in just a second. But first I'm going to leave you and wash my hands again. So I had pushed the saute button down here. If your multi-cooker or your pressure cooker does not have a saute function, that is okay. You do not have to saute it. It's something I like to do. I think it helps hold in the juices, but it's not required. When I used to have a stovetop pressure cooker, I didn't always do this, um, even though I could have done that. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna move this over here, because there are people who like to see from above. So I'm gonna move that right there. And we're gonna go ahead and take this massive tri-tip and we're going to first put some olive oil in. Okay, so that is pretty much coated with olive oil now. And then I'm going to put this tri-tip. And you are going to see that this is huge, right? But it's also going to bend. We're going to push it and we're gonna push it into a C and see how we can just make that work without cutting it. Let's see if you can see from above. It's only gonna take a few minutes for us to get it um, nice and browned on this side. And one of the things you can do if you want to is you can push the meat in certain parts up against the side if you wanna get the sides nice and brown too. So we're just gonna give that a little minute or two. It's already smelling good. Now, I put my tri, I usually cook my tri-tip for about 25 minutes because my family likes our meat for the most part cooked pretty much all the way through. And my husband definitely does not like a lot of pink. But if you want yours to have more pink in it, you can cook it for less time. And if it's too pink, then just put it back in and cook it for a little bit longer. Um, but you do want to cook it to an internal temperature of 145 degrees for food safety reasons. Okay, this is starting to look brown. I can see it. What I look for is when I can start to see it browning up the edges. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Okay, let's just make this seat into another C on this side. Can you see how, I don't know if there's very good light in here. You can kind of see that. Okay, so now we're gonna brown this other side. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to put it on this rack and um, we're gonna add some um, broth to it and we're gonna cook, put it in and put it on high pressure for 25 minutes. I'm just gonna get the broth while we're waiting for this to be finished browning. If some of the pieces are just kind of sticking up a little bit because of the shape, I just kind of push them down with my fork to help them get browned. So that's what I'm doing with the very tips of both ends. Just helping them get browned. And 
and we are just about there. So what I'm going to do is I just pick this up with my fork and check it. Oh, look at that, it's nice and gorgeous. Put that in and then I put the tri-tip right on top of it like that. Okay, now what we have to do is we're gonna add one cup of beef broth. If you don't have beef broth, you can add um, vegetable broth or you could even use water. Ha, that's gonna fog up that uh, camera up above. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this to cancel so it will turn it off. And um, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the lid on and then I'm gonna turn it to ceiling and then I'm gonna turn it to meat and it's gonna check um, 35 is how many minutes but I'm gonna do it down to 25 minutes. Now we're gonna sit and wait for 25 minutes and I'll come back and just show you how to do the quick release method. And I'll also show you how I cut tri-tip. Do you hear it beeping? Means it is done. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove move this. Let me put this so you can see this from above. It, we had set this valve to ceiling. We're, to do the quick release method, all we do is switch it from ceiling to venting. And that's why I use a pot holder because it is very hot steam. So we're gonna let this, it takes about a minute. And then as soon as that is done, releasing all the steam, then um, I'll go ahead and pull out the tri-tip roast and let you see it. It's almost done releasing all the steam. And it just, that little valve just made a little sound. And that's how I know my Instant Pot is ready to be open, that all the steam has been released. Every Instant Pot is different, every multi-cooker, every electric pressure cooker. So read your manual so that you can keep yourself safe while you're using one. Okay, I'm gonna open it. There's a lot of hot steam in there still. I always put this upside down because there's hot liquid in there. That's how I do it and I use my pot holder just in case. Now I have a fan on. I don't know if you can hear it, but I have the fan on so that you can see the roast. It'll blow the steam away. Can you see that in there? And there's still some juices in there and you can save those and thicken them if you want to. But what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna pull my um, tri-tip out and then I'm going to put it on the uh, cutting board and I'm gonna let it rest for about four to five minutes before I slice it. All right, so I've let the tri-tip sit for five minutes. Now when you cut the tri-tip, when you, what are the, one of the things I find is that when you when it cooks in the pressure cooker, it's usually so tender, you don't have to be that careful about how you cut it, as careful as you do when you cut it on the grill. But what we have is there are two different grain directions on a tri-tip, and I don't know if you can see it. I moved this, I flipped this over so that the side that had been cooking would be on top because it makes it easier to, side, to see than the top side that's really still crusted with our rub. But right here, there is a line of fat that kind of separates the two meats, uh, the two grains. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first cut right along that diagonal. Then what I'm gonna do is we wanna cut against the grain. And the grain is basically going this way here and it's going that way there. So we're gonna start just with the end and we're gonna cut slightly at an angle. We'll see. Okay, now most people like to cut theirs about they, a quarter inch thick or maybe even a little bit thinner. Okay, so that's how we're gonna cut that, that side. And then on this side, um, we are going to cut it, since the grain is going this way, we are going to cut it the opposite. 
So we'll just go ahead and cut it the opposite. So we're cutting against the grain, which traditionally is thought to make it just a little bit more tender. You are going to find that a roast cooked in an instant pot is going to be tender just about no matter how you cut it though. At least that's been my experience and I hope it is yours. If you would like the recipe for my Santa Maria dry rub mix, then click the link below. When you click that link, you're also gonna find printable directions for cooking tri-tip in your instant pot, electric pressure cooker, or your favorite multi-cooker, as well as directions for using a stovetop pressure cooker. If you'd like more cooking tips, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell so you'll be notified when I release my next video.